What's good? It's Wood. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are into the fight talk. We have Maxie Hughes, 25 wins, 5 losses, and 2 draws, taking on Kid Galahad, 28 wins and 2 losses. This fight was supposed to take place on an undercard of the Lee Wood title defense against Mauricio Lara, but since that fight was postponed due to a bicep injury sustained by Lee Wood while training, this fight, Maxi Hughes versus Kid Galahad, was elevated to the main event of this card. And, you know, there's actually a title on the line. I didn't say that in the intro because I don't view the IBO belt as being one of the major belts in boxing. I look at, in this modern era, I look at the four major titles to be WBC, WBA, IBF, and WBO. But, again, there is technically a belt on the line. Maxi Hughes is the lightweight IBO champion. Take that for what it's worth. So this is actually kind of interesting because I see Kid Galahad as being as being the better boxer and probably the better fighter between the two where Kid Galahad just recently had the IBF for a moment beating Jaza Dickens for the vacant IBF belt. This was the IBF belt that was vacated by Josh Warrington just before Josh Warrington lost to Mauricio Lara. So Kid Galahad beat Jaza Dickens via 11th round TKO. And this, by the way, would be the second time Kid Galahad TKO'd Jaza Dickens. He had beaten him way back in 2013 via 10th round TKO. So Galahad beat Jaza Dickens and Kit Galahad, by the way, if you want to know how or why Abdul Bari Awad, aka Kit Galahad, got that Kit Galahad name. Kid Galahad was a early 1960s uh, boxing movie. It was like a boxing musical starring Elvis Presley. I think Charles Bronson was also in the movie. But yeah, Kid Galahad, the name is a reference to that early 60s boxing musical. But he beat Jaza Dickens, who, you know, just a couple of years ago, beat Lee Wood, a current belt holder. Kid Galahad beat Dickens for the IBF featherweight belt. And then in his next fight, his first title defense of that belt, Kid Galahad, who was boxing very well against Kiko Martinez, he was winning the rounds. You can hear the broadcasters just marveling over, you know, the elusiveness and the sweet science style of Kid Galahad, was doing very well until Kiko Martinez just cracked him in the fifth round, putting him on his back. Kid Galahad beat the 10 count, made it out of the round, but in the very beginning of the next round, Kiko Martinez just blasted Kid Galahad. I'm talking the first six seconds of that round, basically uncorked another beautiful right hand, just flattened Kid Galahad. Super dramatic knockout. One of the, one of the candidates for knockout of the year for 2021. And Kiko Martinez would be a very short reign champion holding that IBF belt as well because his very next fight, he lost it via TKO to Josh Warrington, making Josh Warrington a two-time IBF champion. So Kid Galahad has been a champion in the featherweight division. And not only that, but when he fought Josh Warrington back in 2019, this was Basically, right after Josh Warrington won the belt from Lee Selby, then defended it successfully against Carl Frampton, well, Warrington's second title defense was against Kid Galahad, and this was a very, very close fight where a lot of people till this day, you could say maybe about half of the boxing audience or even more, thought that Kid Galahad probably deserved a decision win over Josh Warrington in June of 2019. So that would have made Kid Galahad a champion back then. But a few fights later, again, he it ended up winning that IBF belt against Jaza Dickens. In fact, when Josh Warrington vacated that IBF belt that he had defended successfully a few times, it was because he was being mandated to defend that title against Kid Galahad for a second time. So instead of facing Kid Galahad for that second time, Josh Warrington said, you know what? No, I'm not even going to defend this belt. I want to take on, you know, basically tougher and more meaningful, I guess, more meaningful challenges down the line. Well, unfortunately for Josh Warrington, he ran into the then unknown Mauricio Lara, who knocked Josh Warrington out for another one of the 2021 knockouts of the year. So yeah, 
Kid Galahad, I actually see as being probably the better all-around fighter between Hughes and Galahad. But in the pretty odd move by Kid Galahad, he's actually moving two divisions up to face Maxi Hughes at lightweight. So think about that. Kid Galahad, who at one point was a super bantamweight, I'm talking 122, then spent much of his career at 126, is now, not, he's not even stopping at 130. He is going from getting knocked out by Kiko Martinez in the sixth round again. Kid Galahad was doing very well against Kiko Martinez in that fight. But after that knockout, he is jumping two divisions to meet Maxi Hughes at 135. And granted, Maxi Hughes is not a hard puncher. Out of his 25 wins, only five have come via knockout. And you look at his record. Like at one point, Maxi Hughes was like 19, 5, and 2. He has fought Martin Joseph Ward three times. Lost twice, and the first time he fought Ward, it resulted in a draw. So he is 0-2-1 against one opponent, Martin Ward. And in 2019, he fought Liam Walsh. Liam Walsh, y'all might remember, got knocked out by Gervonta Tank Davis when Tank Davis went overseas to fight Walsh and knocked him out there. I remember uh, boxing online boxing analyst Richard Dwyer actually thought that Gervonta Davis might have trouble with Liam Walsh, but no, he got Liam Walsh out of there, I think, pretty quickly. And so Maxi Hughes lost via unanimous decision to Liam Walsh in November of 2019, just a few months before the COVID pandemic. But then since that, he's been on a six-fight winning streak. In fact, his very latest win was against Liam Walsh's brother, Ryan Walsh. That was in March of this year, and he beat the then 35-year-old Ryan Walsh via unanimous decision. So Maxi Hughes is on a pretty good winning streak. He's beaten John O'Carroll in that same winning streak. John O'Carroll was one of the guys who lost to Tevin Farmer when challenging Farmer for his 130-pound belt. But out of those six guys who Maxi Hughes has beaten in this recent win streak, I can't say that any one of them is better than Kid Galahad. The X factor here is obviously how Kid Galahad is going to do going two divisions up. He hasn't been taking lightweight punches or punches from lightweights, nor has he, you know, had to fight a hard 12 rounds at this new weight himself. Like, we don't know if Kid Galahad is going to be as elusive and as, you know, just well reflexed as he'd been in recent fights. Kid Galahad, again, arguably outboxed Josh Warrington. Uh, Kid Galahad has beaten Toka Con Clary, who, you know, went the full 12 against Shakur Stevenson. So, you know, similar to Kid Galahad, a sweet scientist going two divisions up to fighting Maxie Hughes, a couple weeks ago, I was doing a, a, a preview on Isak Cruz versus uh, Eduardo Zordito Ramirez, who is a sweet scientist, two divisions below, 126, was going two divisions up to meet the pit bull, Isak Cruz. And granted, Isak Cruz hits a lot harder than Maxi Hughes. But I was wondering, as good as, you know, Zordito had been at featherweight, how was he going to handle fighting Isak Cruz at lightweight? It didn't go well. I thought he was going to take Cruz several rounds. He didn't. He got knocked out like within two to three rounds. Now, granted, again, Maxi Hughes, not a hard, devastating puncher, but he is a southpaw. Kid Galahad, by the way, orthodox fighter who does switch to southpaw. Look at how he boxed Josh Warrington. He spent several moments in that fight fighting from a southpaw stance. So Kid Galahad, mostly orthodox, but he can switch it up depending on the matchup and the styles. But Maxi Hughes is a good southpaw. He continuously uh, flicks the right hand jab out. He does change levels and look to throw that overhand left pretty frequently. Like if you look at Maxi Hughes' latest fight against Ryan Walsh, he almost does like a Michael Conlon, not as dramatic as dips. Michael Conlon will dip, dip, dip again, dip again, and then throw their left repeatedly. Maxi Hughes does do some dipping and throwing the overhand left where he's switching the angles, giving you the high and low to think about, and he'll jab to the body, jab up top. But he's looking to dip and then throw that overhand left hand to catch you cleanly, which he did against Ryan Walsh. And if Maxi Hughes had more power, he would have probably knocked Ryan Walsh out. So I'm looking at Hughes versus Galahad, and again, 
I'm looking at Kid Galahad as being the better all-around boxer, but I just can't ignore the X factor of being two divisions up. And now Kid Galahad, again, is coming off of a devastating knockout loss. He's 32 years old, so he's not he, age-wise a super old fighter, although fighters tend to age a little bit faster in the lighter divisions. But it does seem like Maxie Hughes is kind of peaking right around now. So these guys are both around the same height. They have somewhat similar reaches. But, you know, Maxie Hughes, like he started his career out as a lightweight. And then he went to 130 for several fights. And then he went back to lightweight. So if you look at the two divisions he's been operating in, those are, look, at he's been operating at 130 and 135. Galahad's been operating at 122. And 126 and is now going to 135 so although I look at Galahad as being the better boxer and fighter between the two I just think that this first fight at 135 it's going to be a little bit rough especially when you consider Maxie Hughes's kind of awkward style like he's not a, 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 I don't look at Maxie Hughes as being an A level or elite fighter I look at him as being like a B level fighter where although he does again technically hold the belt I don't look at him as being a top 10 lightweight I don't look at him as being a top 15 lightweight but I do think that it would take Kid Galahad a little bit of time to get acclimated so this is going to be very interesting to see how elusive he is against Hughes. And both of these guys, by the way, are, you know, pretty, you know, somewhat slick fighters. I think Galahad's a bit slicker. I think Ma uh, Maxi Hughes is a little bit more front foot heavy where he is going to slowly come forward and start popping the jab out, looking for his opportunities to throw power punches. But Kid Galahad, you know, is known to slip a lot of punches that come with nice counters. I just don't know if his... You know, hand speed, if, if he does have a slight hand speed advantage against Hughes, which, you know, when he's at 126, I think he's got faster hands than Hughes, yet to be seen whether he can carry that hand speed as he gets a little bit heavier here at lightweight. But I think Galahad's going to look pretty good in the early rounds. I think Hughes is going to start to wear on him a bit. And I think that this is going to end up being a little bit more of a fight than a chess match, if you will. So Galahad, because I do think that he is going to be a little bit less elusive and a little bit easier to find in there and to hit, I, I just you know wonder, one, about his chin. We've seen that knockout loss to Kiko Martinez. And, you know, maybe that is a one-off. I mean, Kid Galahad hasn't lost a lot. Again, Maxi Hughes has five losses. Kid Galahad's only two losses are that recent knockout loss to Kiko Martinez and then that split decision, controversial, disputed loss to Josh Warrington. So Kid Galahad has done a lot of winning. I think he's going to win the majority of the early rounds against Maxi Hughes, but I think Maxi Hughes is going to there are going to be a lot of swing rounds, I think, in the middle and late rounds. And I think Maxi Hughes' activity and maybe even dropping Kid Galahad some point along the way. I don't think he's going to finish Kid Galahad. But I think Maxi Hughes is going to be able to pull off a close decision win here. I think it's going to be something like seven rounds to five, maybe eight rounds to four, maybe even a split decision win. I think this is going to be a competitive and close fight. And again, if these guys were naturally the same size, I would say I would pick Galahad to win it. But I don't think they are. And maybe a couple fights from now, Galahad gets more acclimated to the division. But as it stands, I'm going to go with Maxi Hughes via close decision. But let me know what you think about Maxi Hughes versus Kid Galahad in the comments. And do any of these guys at 135 stand a chance at being like an elite lightweight? Like if Kid Galahad is able to beat Maxi Hughes here, do you think he's going to go on and have further success against either elite or near elite lightweights? And how good do you think Maxi Hughes can end up being? Basically, what is Maxi Hughes's ceiling in the lightweight division? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you were into the fight talk. I'm Woog. Thanks for tuning in.